everyone. This is Gail from Rainbow Food Rocks, and I'm here with Krishna from the Sarga Farms. Krishna is a Hatha yoga instructor, produces essential oils, and is an avid meditator. Welcome, Krishna. And what can you tell us about your business, your lifestyle, and your philosophy? Thank you, Gail. Thank you uh, for introducing about me and our work. Yes, so the question is about uh, business, lifestyle, and philosophy, right? So I'll start with business first because uh, nowadays most of the people they are talking about business only because uh, it's all about economics. So why I have to talk uh, before about it because earlier in India, like mm, during the time of Buddha, you can say before 2,500 years, business was not the main priority in this country, uh, in India, in our subcontinent. So the main priority was always spirituality and neither the politics was major priority. So if someone was talking about business, so maybe it could be a secondary topic, not the primary topic. But right now, the way the current situation is, even in India or anywhere, wherever I see, so people, they focus always on, sir, how much do you earn? What work you are doing? And how is your business going on? And what is your salary? Like they, they may ask these questions directly or indirectly, but the primary attention comes on this part. And I was, uh, there's an, another example. So this is just a kind of, you can say this is the philosophy why I, I'm, I want to talk more about business because people understand that part more better than the other part. Uh, there's another example which I want to give you. It is said that in Tibet, uh, one third of population was uh, into, they were monks, yes? So it means that uh, the whole family used to take care of them and actually the whole country is taking care. Similarly, the situation was same here in India and people used to feel very lucky in, in earlier times that, oh, someone from our family has uh, been, has become a yogi or the person has been initiated into spirituality so it used to be their pride if someone has let's say five children or ten children out of those ten if one has become something in that field so the whole family would say that it is we are fortunate to have such a person in our family but right now the situation has become very opposite sir you want to do yoga or something no uh, what how much can you earn now because that is what matters now and there are reasons also behind that because all over the world, we have so many economic forums and uh, economic meetings also. Uh, so the even in newspaper and television, they are being pretty much uh, focused. If there is a very big seminar on some spirituality, a real one, so they will be hidden in some other corners of the newspaper or even television also. Okay, so now that's why I want to start with it. Uh, what's about the business? Uh, first of all, uh, so the coming to the main answer, uh, it all happened by mistake because it was not my plan to start business and neither I, I have a strong intention to do business right now we are we have to do because anyway we need some money to maintain our life that is a part of life so whether you do this work so uh, the concept of business for me is any work which you do in which you are selling your skill becomes a business for a teacher teaching whatever the teacher is teaching is a business. For a computer person or the person who is making a software, he can be an employee, but still I call him a business because he's exchanging money with his skills. So similarly, so the concept of business does not mean that we are having a company, that's why we, can, we should be called business person. I think that everyone in the world is a business person because, because they are selling their skills and they, get, they earn some money. So we started uh, now coming to the sorry coming to the main uh, part. We started it because we are essentially into yoga. So in yoga we need pure oils, therapeutic oils. So when we all started, we wanted to have few oils which India is famous for. For example, patchouli, vetiver, and uh, sandalwood. So these oils are like, uh, even their origin itself is from India, like patchouli is Indian word, sandalwood is Indian word, whatever is Indian word. So we started and uh, later on we realized that people are cheating because uh, it was new, it's a big, it was a beginning for us. They said that oils are all very okay. They said many sweet words, 
many promising words there. So maybe it was uh, like we were not experienced. I was not experienced enough. So finally they cheated and we realized it after getting the lab test. We thought that this is not the right way because if anyway we had to get cheated, then better to sell fake oils rather than original. And so we made our own network of farms and, and farmers, actually distillers, because farmers, farmer can produce, they produce almost everything, but it's more about aromatic plants, we call them. Those who, those who are farming the plants from where we can distill the essential oils, we call such aromatic plants. So we made that network with the farmers and distillers also actually. Sometimes it happens that a farmer is someone else and the distiller is some other guy who is in the very the next farm. So they both are interconnected actually. So we made our own network. The name is Nisarga Farms. Nisarga we kept because uh, Nisarga means something which is natural, inborn, innate, original, raw form, as you can say, worthy. So that's why we say that Nisarga means Nisarga forms the original form of the oils as the nature is giving. We will have that only. We just uh, are a medium with that. So this is how we started. So everything began from cheating. It was a good part because we learned some lessons and we thought we'll do our own. Then we started it. So this is the um, uh, not philosophy kind of story. How we did, how we started. Yes, now, uh, do you have some questions Please. on this part? Thank you for sharing that part. And uh, you have a lifestyle that's very similar to me in that we both are yogis. We both do yoga and meditation daily. Um, we both eat a certain way. Can you go into, for my audience, a little bit about that and uh, how that also affects your business? Yes, uh, for that, uh, I often say, uh, rather I do not say, people ask questions, then I have to answer them. People ask questions that, uh, do you have organic certification? Or do you have organic essential oils? So I, my reply to them is, sir, before you ask this question, you tell me, is your life organic or not? Is your character organic or not? If your, your character is not organic, how can you expect that? How can you expect the product has to be organic? Because the one whose own character and lifestyle is organic, as much as organic one, then only that person can understand the organic stuff or organic products. And most of the time I realize that people become silent because it's a very direct question to them and actually direct question to them on their character. We are more focused on outer things like what is the whether the cotton is organic. Yeah, my uh, pillow is organic, my food is organic, but the main question comes from the character. So, uh, coming to that part, I said, certificate by certification, our oils are not organic. Yeah, because if you want to have that, then we have to pay lots of money to organic uh, companies. But what we do is, uh, most of the oils they are uh, they are kind of wild crafted, uh, means with legal permission we do them. And in India recently, there are many awakened farmers, many actually, those who are using minimum pesticides. Minimum simply means they use it once when the crop is very new, because if they don't use it, the crop will simply die. So they use it only once. That is like, it is something like you're washing your feet or you're washing your clothes only with soap, very mild soap. And then you are just using some organic stuff to wash your clothes. So, and then they later on they use at a certain time when the crop is at the peak season, just so that the soil is retained and um, the crop doesn't get any kind of uh, insect or some other, whatever disease it can. So I mean, this is minimum and there's pesticide residue also lab test, which finds that there is no such pesticide in that. So in that way, we are doing organic farming, but if, when we talk about USDA certification or EcoCert, the so-called the big brands in the world, we are not having that simply because we have to pay one, <coughs> sorry, uh, one year the cost would be perhaps $500 and you have to continuously pay them and actually you are serving everything to them just because they put some stamp. So it does not make sense that we are, we are the farmers, we produce and we pay money to you just because you have become some authority to sign. 
so we are not having SS organic certification now. So about our, uh, what I want to say that our OIS, sorry, now I'll ask you, what was your main question here? Maybe I deviated from the topic. Um, okay. Uh, well, I was also curious how you tie that in because you, I know that you do yoga and you do meditation and that's a really big okay. part too and I think that affects the quality of your product because I know in just having your samples when I even just put my hands around them before I even open them there's a certain energy to it a certain vibration that someone very sensitive can pick up so I was wondering if you could just go into a little bit about how philosophically you were asking what is philosophy Yes. So, uh, yes, sometimes it takes time to, uh, to come directly come to the question. If I, if I just speak in one word, philosophically, if I say just one Sanskrit word, that philosophically we are just, there are certain words, Jan Kalyan or something, then perhaps it becomes difficult to understand. So why I talked about organic certification and this character. So philosophy starts from if you know what is your own character. So we, so why I, I was giving a comparison between organic certification and the character because our core focus is not on organic certification it is more on is our character good enough to produce some very good product or not or when it would produce so we make sure that so now coming to philosophy part we make sure that we we have a good balanced emotional things and whatever we touch it is very serious it is very serious that whatever we touch that has to become full of energy and positive energy. Better to say a vibrant, vibrant product or produce. So this is how the whole philosophy is. Whatever we come across, it has we have to create some joy. Not because we are creating it uh, deliberately. Because life itself is so joyful, and if we cannot create it in each and every moment, uh, sorry, moment or product or even small small actions, then it will have no effect. So. The philosophy here is that our farmers are well emotionally balanced. It is very important because sometimes farmers are very greedy. They are damn greedy and if you talk to them, they always say, Sir, how much money will you give me? I said, it is not about money. It is all about produce. How good you are making that matters. So till now, my experience is very clear. Any farmer who is, who is emotionally balanced and who has some kind of wisdom, they, are, they produce very good. They really produce very good. Then their whole farming, even the whole structure itself is organic. And the core reason is not because he's putting or, organic some manure or because his character is more organic. So it is actually a perspective. I mean, learning from them also. And so emotional stability has to be there. The character itself has to be organic. It means what I say, I'm doing it. And whatever traditional knowledge is, whatever we have, we are protecting it and whatever new we are needing, we are also adding it for our own advantages. So this is how the philosophical part is. And just I won't go more into it deep and just to sum up it in one word, it is the core philosophy of yoga actually. We are not much focused on the result that how much I can produce from one a certain area. Of course, we do estimation that from one farm, I want to have 10 liters of oil. But if you don't get, okay, some, it is nature, we'll get the eight liters this time. Sometimes we get seven, sometimes we get 12 also. So uh, we don't focus much on the result. The whole is that the process itself has to be very, very important. So that when the process becomes organic, because of our, our emotions, intention, and the desire to welfare people. And uh, the whole thing is uh, how it's a good will, actually. What's your goodwill and do you really want to make people happy and smile uh, through your work or not? Because people won't see my photo. People will feel the product. So, so the product is actually your own labor, your own blood and sweat. Uh, actually, it's the, from the farm and the, our whole uh, community, whatever we are doing. And I think that speaks when people see our product, then it is pretty much, generally it is pretty much felt by people and it's pretty much visible that the oil has certain energy. So this is what you're talking about. And you could, you could feel vibrations. Yes, and I, I was going to say that, that we can change the vibration of something like even our water. And they've had examples where they've had frozen water and someone has a positive vibration, maybe saying the word love, and they freeze the water and it creates certain crystals. And then they say something like hate 
and then that can cause a different formation. I don't know if you've seen those experiments. Have you seen those before? Just kind of goes to show the power of our words, the vibrations coming out of our mouth, and that goes into the oils and I notice it. So I'm glad that you talked about that. I've seen pictures of you on the farms. Can you tell us what you do when you're going on the farms? Uh, I know you have a lot of pictures on the internet of you visiting different areas and doing certain things. So what is your role yes. to do there? See, uh, this is another interesting question. People ask that, am I doing uh, direct farming or not? Mm, so coming to that part, first of all, I'm not sitting in the farm because if I if I am there, then I cannot talk like this and neither I can handle all these kind of marketing and replying to email. So my major role here is the, you, it's better to say quality control. So we work hand to hand like the continuously we are in touch with farmers and whenever we visit. So we have to see the whole process by ourselves that as the season changes, how the crop small is and like when there is snowfall like we had rosemary and uh, somehow it was planted in wrong time. There's a season, like the exact time for that. You have to plant it just within that one week period. So we missed that period and still uh, uh, we planted after that snowfall happened and it just died. So oh. if, if, if someone like rosemary is a cheaper oil, uh, like when it talks, it's a, it's a good oil and it's a cheap oil, means easily available. But if we tell that, sir, our plant has died, then people have other options also. They can buy from some other places. That's okay, justified. So the role here is to go and see that how the, actually the plant is growing in different season. Unless you see it, it is like your own kids. You may not be at your home. You may be coming once in a week or once in a month because of your job or whatever reason. But if you are missing them, if you don't see them for six months, you will never know how your kids are growing. So you have to see them often, like every five days, every 10 days. Also, similarly, we make visit to see how plants is growing, what are the problems coming up there, and what the, uh, our farmer is doing, I mean, planning to distill the oil. Because at the same time, generally it happens that at almost at the same time, three crops are ready. Lavender is ready. Rosemary is ready, clarices is ready. So we have to make uh, uh, the slot that the, because machine is limited, uh, the distillation machine. So we say that, okay, this week we'll, we will go to lavender and then we have to clean the, it's like a complete cleaning of the machine. And then we will to, uh, we'll start with another one. And somehow if we miss something, let's say, because of weather or whatever the reasons we cannot distill then we just uh, plan that okay this time we'll make them dry only we'll sell in dry form we will not distill any oil so it is all about quality control and then after visiting the farm farmer of course talking with them and we also impart yoga education uh, to them whatever we can uh, because that's very important if I just go and I say yes sir how much 10 kilo you will give me 10 liters of oil or 10 kilo yield, you will give me, fine, I'm going, please put in my car and I'm going, no. You need to spend time with them. We spend time in their house also and it's, it's a family relation. Uh, and then and I realized that very rarely people do it. It's, it is not people do not want to do because people do not have time. It is something like people think that, wow, yoga, I want to do it. But actually they are asking for the benefits. But if you tell them you have to do it directly and every day you have to do a minimum for 30 minutes to one hour, they will step back and they won't say. Similarly, people want good stuff. But if you tell them you have to go high up in the mountain, you drive the car for 12 hours to 14 hours and it's so zig zag and then you have to spend there with very less facilities and so many inconveniences actually. And it will, not only that, it disturbs your whole schedule because no internet, or very less internet, you cannot do anything. So for a few days, you're like out of the world. So on one side, it is very fantastic. On the other side, for three days, your whatever work you could do on online, it has almost stopped, it literally stops. So this is what the, it's a part of quality and it, it demands lots of effort. And after traveling and meeting so many farmers and distillers, rarely, rarely people in India do it. What generally do is they're sitting at one place and they simply order because we ourselves sell to many Indian people, those who are sitting and they ask us because they know that I go, we have a connection with farmers. So it's a real visit because our pictures speak. And that's yeah. why I tell that uh, it is perhaps, perhaps if I'm not wrong, that 
you won't come across such a profile which we have uh, in India. I have not seen, and I I know thousands of profile on Instagram also, Facebook also. There are actually very few, but very very few in other parts of the world, like some in France, some are in Australia and Tasmania, and there are like certain. But in India, I have not seen such profile. And so overall. Out of 100, if we have only 10 profiles, it means 90 are just like they are more of uh, not directly connected to farmer. So the whole part is quality control and I was talking about the process. Then in this part also comes uh, sensitivity of the nose because generally it happens that the farmer nose is not very sensitive. And it is okay, the farmer is expert in something else. His hands can be more sensitive. The moment he touches the soil, he can feel it, what, what kind of soil it is. So oil is being distilled we see the process we participate in that but when the yield comes at that time we realize that maybe the oil has a burning note yeah and when there is burning note in the oil then the quality changes even though the oil is pure then we, we think and we at that time we decided what what's wrong going on whether the is the problem with the temperature or the water is being overheated or some problem in the process itself then we take the help of uh, uh, better to say this, uh, Indian scientist or the technical staff we which we have, let me take their help that because I I, I alone cannot do everything. Farmers' display role is limited, my role is limited. So if the whole chain is network is there, lab is there, we are here, and farmer is there, his family, our family, our team, and the qualified, the so-called, actually not so-called, but the botanical scientist. We, we have connections with them, very good connections, and they really help us. So this is, in one way, actually, the, the whole part is about, the whole story is about quality control, the part which uh, we are doing here. And that's pretty amazing that you actually go to these areas and you check in and you're making, you're bonding with these farmers like they're your family and going in and, and networking all around. Now, was this a family business that was kind of handed down through the generations or is this something that your family just started up and is this something that you're incorporating with your whole family or is it mostly just you? Uh, can you tell the audience a little bit about that as well? Uh, this was not handed down. Uh, it was more we started on our own, as I said, that it just won't happen by mistake because generally the people who are, it is very clear in even in India, traditionally, those people who are more interested into spirituality, they just rarely, I mean, 99.99% they never think our business because it is for them, it's very difficult to manage and it just goes opposite to what the work they want to do. When you are, we want to focus more on spirituality and every time you have to think about money. And you literally have to think about money, not because you are interested, because there is a cost for everything, material yes. cost, transportation cost. So you start thinking and then it is, they feel that if I had to think about money, out, I mean, let's say I am working 12 hours one day, out of 12 hours, for eight hours, if I'm thinking about money only, actually thinking about the cost and calculations, then how can I live a spirituality life? In spiritual life, you have to leave aside all those things. Yes. And this was also also one of the reasons that in ancient India, I mean before, still in, we have in India still it is there, that uh, the country was pretty rich enough, so rich enough that uh, like in one family if there are ten people, then one one would work and nine would sit idle and nine would say that we don't have to work because one is enough. That means that so much land itself is so rich and the uh, earth had so, so much like produce. Now uh, everything has become scarcity. It's a scarce. Land is limited. Population is too much. So these people, uh, those who are into the path of spirituality, they just you know, focus on the business part. Similarly for me also, it's, it's one of the most difficult tasks that how do I handle it and, and many times I just stop it. Because at the, when the you just get fed up with all these calculations. Calculation is a good thing, but every time, if in each small, small aspect, what is the cost of this t-shirt? This much, okay, this much, the farmer will give. This much, I have to put tax. This much, I have to give to government. When you, you know, these are all very important stuff for your tax sessions. And when you get stuck into this, then there's no yoga. So it's very difficult to make this, uh, make balance. So 
it was not handed down because people like us we don't do dealing these things uh, and still now i say that i'm not dealing with them it just happened by mistake and just by i'm more acting as a medium a medium simply means you get from this side and you pass it on that side and meanwhile when you think that it is too much coming from this side you just stop it for a while so that you become fresh again and then you pass it on again that side so we are not stick to this part and so we started it on our own because situation was such that as i told you people supplied adulterated oils and i was personally also interested into aroma like nose and whatever comes to nose uh, it's just a very fantastic feeling when you smell uh, something very beautiful and it leads to a very different world yes <laughs> um, so now these ones are the forest treasure <laughs> share these with some of my friends so how does forest treasure tie into this can you explain that to the audience because i have some friends that have these samples and they're curious how this ties in with nisaga farms are they directly related can you explain that to the audience uh, yes uh, they are directly related mm, what happened that uh, when we when we started this work and then there was a need to sell um, the oils in local area only i mean in our own homeland and it, it is very obvious also that if something i am producing like i have certain skill and if i am not giving my skill in my own home then what is the use of that similarly if i have certain skill and if i am not giving that skill in my home country home country means wherever i am living currently because my home country if i'm living in us the us becomes my home country homeland so we are getting from india and we have to sell here not because uh, of the money or business part just simply because there are people who are looking for real oils so I'll give to them so we thought that actually it's a kind of a big pressure also on us because it is not difficult to sorry it is not easy to maintain the brand and as so much cost is there in sticker labeling bottle procurement and raw, uh, raw material actually hardware so we started it keeping in mind that there are really the way we had been cheated similarly there are thousands of other people who had been cheated and those who are really looking for original oils so we are everything comes from same farm our farmers and distillers so those who want we are very open those who want in bulk we will give them in bulk okay you want to buy 5 liters 10 liters 1 liter so you take it and if you want to have in small if your budget is less or you just your requirement is less so you have these and uh, i have come across many people those who say that before we never knew that india india is having all these oils i said you have to start somewhere she said yes but overall in the market they are not available so but now they are happy it means that they say that we are getting it from abroad from us or uk because our relatives are there and we get from there so many people are saying like that then i said yes there are most of the oils are available in india except few because everyone cannot distill all the oils so whatever we do not have and then i also tell them let's say uh, there is a oil um, some new oil uh, orange oil so and they want to have it from india and if we are not getting it i say see we don't have this from here better you get it from so and so country of so and so brand so neither we are attached to our brand that okay you have to buy from forest trails only we know what we are doing so we guide them very clearly and whatever we are not having we again tell them please buy from a different brand and we i also talk about the prices also that if you are somebody is selling the oil in this much money it means it is like too much maybe the ideal range has to be between Let's say twenty to twenty-five, not fifteen, or ten to fifteen. So forest treasure is essentially serving Indian customers, and Nisarga Farm is serving everyone, whether Indian or those. It's like open market for us both. Nice. Um, well, thinking about. Is there anything else that you'd like to add to the to tell the audience about your your product or anything else that you want to add about your lifestyle or your um, 
anything else just in general about your philosophy that you just want to share with the audience? You have a, an open platform at this moment. And then uh, if there's nothing else that you'd like to add, then we can just go ahead and close the discussion. So is there anything else that maybe you would like to, to inform the public about your project? Uh, yes. Life? <laughs> Uh, it's it's more about philosophy because uh, I often say that if your philosophy is not very clear and uh, when I say philosophy not the what we read in the books and the philosophy has to be becomes very clear based on your experience and experiments of your of the life which you are living currently so if you're not, not very clear then everything becomes a very messy situation whatever I remember in Krishnamurti often says that as a human being whatever we touch we make it ugly so can we do something, whatever we touch, can we make it beautiful, even the small, small things. So uh, now coming to this philosophical part, I think it is pretty clear to us, very, very clear. Like we, there are certain few words which I often say uh, that sincerity has to be there. You have to be sincere. Then you have to be loyal. That if you are with certain person, certain farm or certain team, you have to be loyal to them. And then you, there has to be integrity. Sincerity, trust, loyalty, integrity, and every day you have to strive and you have to work for your own upliftment. Not by reading all those funny books and so, but just uh, I'll give you one short example that will make it very clear. Uh, just recently, uh, one person uh, she was asking that, and uh, are there like she was asking more about spiritual questions? Are there angels? Are there guides? Or they like all those uh, spiritual theoretical questions i said yes. see see man whether they exist or not it doesn't matter what matters is what are you doing for yourself are you doing some some kind of spiritual activity are you doing meditation are you doing yoga or any any form of physical activity which leads to your spirituality she said no i said okay then what's the use of it? even if i answer them that some angel is existing she will, she's helping you what do you get out of it you don't get because no one will help you unless you help yourself so yeah so similarly so the point here is that it is this is what we call it we have to be sincere to our, ourselves before getting into all those deep philosophical questions and just today in the morning only i get one one of our friend is my friend is there he is he lives living in the us only he was talking of some other guy from there i said i messaged him. i said just stop watching that person because if you want some funny people in your life, there are hundreds of such Indians flooded with so many such funny spiritual people. You can come here and so many are there already on the TV. Various, so many channels are there. You can watch them. Otherwise, you better be focused on your core values here. So the flustering part has to be very, very clear. That means that it has to be highly practical. And life itself is such that you are going this way. Yes? And the moment you feel that it is not working, you really, you literally have to change the direction. And it is not easy to change. You can change once, you can change twice, but if the things keep happening again and again, you get tired. So the solution here is to go slow so that you don't get, it's not a burden to turn to some other side and change the direction. When we go very slowly, it is like when we are going very, very fast and we have to change, we will fall down. And when you're going very slowly, you see it from a distance only that something is not clear and it is not the what I'm looking for. You see that edge yeah, very softly and swiftly in a more beautiful way. And it becomes an art, art in itself. Someone, third person looks at it. So slow is the key. And then loyalty, integrity, sincerity, trust. What to my, myself, not getting into those deeper questions of which we see in film or sometimes when I watch all this film yeah, yesterday also I was watching something they fantasize them so beautifully but in practical life it does not happen that way um, so we have to uh, come out of uh, those kind of fantasies which we have been fed or we have created on our own uh, by living in society or watching film and TV or by reading books and when the life becomes more practical then it's just very very simple actually you do your practice, whatever you are doing. You do your work, and when you are tired, you just take rest. It's, it's just you are into simple steps. So this is how we are following, and this is affecting our work also. Because when we, as I said, that when things that we cannot handle, we don't do it. 
what we cannot handle, we should not do. We have limitations. So, and then again, we start with fresh mold and with more energy. And so all these things, uh, I feel that um, the oils which we are creating or whatever work we are creating, they are pretty much visible. And people feel it, uh, not because intentionally we want to do it, and because our lifestyle has become such that we are stable. I don't say I am perfectly stable, but pretty much stable in our thoughts, in our lifestyle, in the, what we have to do, what we have to eat. And specifically, like you are, uh, Gail, you are also doing uh, raw food and uh, you are yourself are a very good chef. So you know the importance of food here. So my question to you also here is, um, it's better you speak something on food, like how food can affect the, because I can also answer it, but now I want you to speak something. Um, well, I was thinking, as for me, so. I incorporate the food and the essential oils, and I tell people that they can actually heal themselves, and that's my mission statement, is that you have the power to heal yourself, and then, like I said, I use the food and essential oils. Um, with the food, I mean, you can do so many things, and same with the essential oils. So, for instance, like, say someone really comes to me and says, I really need to detox. Okay, well, there are foods that you can use. You can use cilantro to detox. You can use dulse, for instance. Um, you can um, raw spirulina. I don't know if you've ever had that before. Have you had raw spirulina? Um, yes. It's amazing. It's full of vitamins. It helps with detoxification. I mean, it's just a wonderful product. Um, that, so I actually have a recipe in my recipe book and it's called the Super Energizing Detox Smoothie. And I include lots of different berries and some of the things I just mentioned, I have wild blueberries in there. And um, <clears throat> I just put a whole bunch of different uh, herbs to make a tea as the base. So that's just one example. Um, other things I can do with food and uh, essential oils, like say for instance, I'm making, cause I have to also sell my food to my kids. So my situation, I have three kids and I have to find clever ways in every single recipe to incorporate things that are detoxifying, things that have nutritional value, things that have high energy. I'm growing a garden in my, my backyard, which almost looks like a farm. <laughs> and so I have to come up with these clever ways. So sometimes I'll take peppermint oil and I'll put it into a smoothie that I make into an ice cream. So for instance, I'll take frozen bananas. So I'll take my bananas and I'll put them in the freezer. And then I'll take spinach, which has the iron and such. And then I'll have um, cacao nibs because I want to make something that's almost like a chocolate chip kind of ice cream. But generally, like regular chocolate chips on the market, they have a lot of things that you wouldn't want to have your kid have. And also, um, those chocolate chips have sugar typically. And so if you just get cacao nibs, you cut out the sugar, you're getting the benefits of the cacao. And so I'll have something like that and I'll put that in. Um, and then I'll add the peppermint oil to give it like a mint. You know how there's that peppermint ice cream that's very popular, especially here in America. I don't know about India, but that, um, I don't want the kids to have the traditional version for many reasons, which I go into in my book. So I'll take all of those ingredients and I'll blend them. And similarly, like lavender oil, I can use to make another ice cream where I take the frozen bananas and I use my homemade lavender milk. So I make almond milk, which just takes like less than a minute. I make my own almond milk. You can do cashew milk or some buttermilk. And so I take that base and I have the, um, the bananas again and I have a little bit of lavender oil and so I can make like a lavender ice cream so I come up with these like clever things for my kids and then I incorporate the oils or something nutritional um trying to think of what else I do with food I know there's more to say um thinking 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 I also try to make my food because I, for us it's a little different we don't eat wheat dairy corn soy and eggs and that's because of the journey I've been on with my kids and healing my kids and I have a lot of that information on my website and I know that you're probably pretty familiar with it with that my oldest daughter had the autism spectrum disorder and ADHD my youngest daughter was having pain throughout her body and wasn't able to walk and my son was having uh, like breakouts and getting staph infections. And just to kind of summarize that really, really fast is that it was the chemicalization of those foods based on my observation anyhow and my research that was causing these symptoms that then manifested into these 
illnesses. So they were getting the diagnosis based on the symptoms, which was triggered by what was going on with the food. So for me, I have no wheat, no dairy, no corn, no soy, no eggs. I also have no peanuts because there's a peanut allergy in the house that's anaphylactic. And so I had to be like really clever. Like I, my kids can't have the American pizza. So I have to make my own version of pizza. Well, what can I use that is also a healing ingredient, make it look like pizza, make it taste good, which is really important, especially with kids because kids can be so picky. And, uh, and then I just got really clever. And I happen to like languages and different cultures. And for me, I like food from different cultures. So I then was like, okay, can I incorporate all these different cultures, food items, and make them in a way that we can eat and make them in a way that I can sell to my kids and make it in a way that is uh, detoxifying, nutritious, and you know, the list goes on. So I had to get really clever. And that's that's pretty much what I've been doing. And I've been experimenting a little bit more too with like date balls and taking lemon oil and lime oil and making these delicious date balls or cardamom. You can take a little bit of cardamom oil and you can make like really delicious date balls. And I call them like little ladus because <laughs> we can't have the traditional version. So then I have to make my own. And uh, what else have I done? I've done so many things with food. It, it's pretty much like if you give me a recipe and it's something that we probably can't have, I'll find a way to change the ingredients and I'll even make it healthy or healthier depending. And I will then make it look like what it's supposed to be, taste like that or better, and then have that nutritional aspect. So hopefully that answers your question. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's, it's very, really always very interesting uh, because um, I can see lots of passion uh, because without passion, we cannot do. And passion comes out of uh, then actually there's a necessity and there has to be deeper understanding for that why do we have to make all these things either you are become super crazy because you don't know what you to do in life when when there is understanding then the it is not craziness on the outer surface you can feel that there's a you there's a wisdom actually so you are doing all those things out of wisdom and out of passion which you need and uh, I mean actually we all need but now situation has become very different because people are more dependent on market and uh, everything is easily available also easy to spend sometimes money also because you have all that sort of cards so um, i really would like that people take interest in food and like the way you are taking and to have some passion in that so that it is not only about the self it is about the whole community actually everything begins with family so what I am meeting, what my family members, and when I say family means wherever I am living, the three or four people who are very near to me, they become a part of my family. If I'm living outside and I have three friends, I'm living with my roommates. So they become my family. So if we take care in that way, then things can really become, I mean, it, it can change in just overnight. <laughs> so I, I really appreciate whatever the recipe you do and the experiments you do and because it's the same thing you to follow tradition and still if something is not up to the mark and not uh, feasible now or not valid enough then we have to change according to the times because we have more better options also food than what earlier we had we used to have so very very interesting and very inspiring actually <laughs> Thank you. And I'm, I'm really trying to work on growing my own food so that I'm not so reliant on the markets, especially with what's been going on and it's becoming more difficult to access food. And I don't know about in India, but in America, for instance, there are a lot of mass mandates and stores are enforcing it. And whether it's legal or not is another question, but it's becoming more difficult to enjoy the experience of going into a grocery store, for instance, and having all these different foods available. It's in America right now, it's actually a very uncomfortable thing. And if you walk into a store, you don't know if somebody's going to say something to you, or are they going to attack you or going to throw something at you? So it's, it's one of those things where it just reminds people like me that we need to build community. We need to start working together. We need to start growing our own food. We need to start figuring out how can we make meals with what we have been growing. So for instance, you come from Russia, I believe, and you probably know of the dish Kosak, right? Do you know of this dish? Yes. Okay, there's a green one and there's a red one and the green one has no meat and the red one has meat, yes? So for me, one of my experiments was can I 
do COSAC with everything that's in my garden and not have to go to the grocery store. And if I can do that, then that's one meal, <laughs> that's a start, one meal that I don't have to go out and I can do all on my own. So I was trying to grow the potatoes and then I had the dill and the parsley and the celery and the cucumbers. I have like these big fat orange cucumbers growing. I think I watered them too much or something. And so I put all that in the blender with some olive oil and some nettle salt and, and such. And so I blended it all. So I had the nice green sauce. I put it over the steamed potatoes. And I'm like, look at that, a full meal from my garden. I didn't even have to go to the grocery store. I didn't have to deal with all that. And then the other thing I'm doing is working with like people around in the community and saying, oh, okay, you're growing eggplants. And I, I didn't have success with my eggplant, but I need eggplant to make my eggplant hummus because I have a regular hummus and an eggplant hummus. And so I'm like, okay, so I'll trade you and then I'll take your eggplant for whatever it is that you're interested in, maybe an oil or something like that. And then I'll use that and I'll bake it and I'll make my hummus. And so I'm trying it, but it's hard because not everyone is growing their own food, but I'm trying to build that very slowly. So that way, if things like this coronavirus happen, this uh, COVID-19 to be more exact, then we can all work together. We're not so dependent on that. And in America, what we find here is that so many people are dependent on the markets and they've lost that whole community kind of thing. <laughs> So, so here actually the core, uh, the core point is that, um, which uh, I forgot to mention, that if something we are missing, we as a community or people, then it is the proper education on food. If something you have to really choose in life, that which must be urgently imparted to the people, then it has to be the food. So once the food comes in, then we have to, we have to think about land, we have to think about farmer, we have to think about gardening, whatever we can do. It could be urban farming also. And then the whole story goes like how the, they are produced, what we are eating, how they affect our lives, emotions, and what we can do. And there's a joy in that because directly everything is coming from earth. Yeah, earth is producing everything. And we have to, it helps us to get connected to earth also and to take care of our own body. So... Uh, what you are doing is actually very, very inspiring. And I really wish that maybe one day you should start uh, doing such uh, uh, offline uh, or something later on after COVID, now the situation is different. Uh, something more in a, um, I would like you to open kind of mini school uh, or just, just a mini something. Uh, it's one of my can... uh, aspirations. I'm glad you mentioned yes. it. Go ahead. Yes, to, uh, to impart something more practical and which can affect the basic uh, nature and the basic um, our personality it's not only about food but how it is connected to the more deeper aspects of life so that's very very important and we really need uh, really need people like you uh, and we need many like in every community and society we need many people so if you could start something that would be very very okay we are doing you know of yogananda like right you know of yogananda yes. well he wanted a how to live school and then swami kriyananda created the Living Wisdom School. My daughter, Abigail, when I was like, I was homeschooling and I sent her to the Living Wisdom School of Seattle. And she had an amazing experience. There was yoga, there was meditation daily, there was a um, garden, an organic garden that they were growing that they could eat from. There, there was uh, nature walks, um, outside time daily and everything flowed in a very natural way. There was an emphasis on spirituality, but it embraced all different religions and faiths. It wasn't limited to just one. And they had a temple, they had a bookstore that kind of extended out through this Ananda Worldwide chain that all of this was a part of. And I really, really enjoyed her being there. It inspired me, it motivated me, it guided me to then take uh, Kriya Yoga, so Raja Yoga, Hatha Yoga, and then Kriya Yoga, and it it just like ignited something in me. And ever since I started that path, um, and this is my daily routine now of yoga and meditation and Kriya Yoga. And I mean, I'm very like it's every day before I start my day. <laughs> um, that has 
kind of led me down this, like, I get this knowing of, I need to somehow create a community with a school like this and a farm like this. I mean, it's already within the Ananda organization, but I think that it can be done even more and maybe expand it out so it's open even more to all different kinds of people. So I love that you're uh, noticing that it would be really nice to have some kind of school and I'm trying to figure out how to manifest that, especially with this whole COVID-19 issue. But I'm, I'm trying to work with some people. I interviewed someone um, last night who is running to be a politician. And uh, for me, it doesn't matter what party someone is because what I go by is, you know, what kind of person is this? What, what's the person's philosophy? What's this person's goal? Why is this person running for office in the first place? So I interviewed this person and a lot of people were kind of like, you know, what is she doing interviewing a future politician? That's just not my realm. My realm is languages and art and, and now food and teaching and, and such, you know, many different things, but not that. And so I got to talking and we started talking about this community idea and this education idea. And it turned out to be like overall a six hour conversation, but it just reminded me of that. And one of the things I was learning in that discussion was he had this creative idea of how to fund it. And that's been the thing holding me back is where do I come up with the money to start something like this so that it can keep going? And I had been thinking and thinking like for two years now. And so he proposed this idea of having this like gym where a certain amount goes to creating this community and then having it almost like a wellness center offering all these different modalities which is something i've been envisioning and i was then like throwing in the whole like oh yeah the food the essential oils and the reiki and the yoga and meditation you know like going on and on and on all these things that could be incorporated in this and and how like these little micro communities could be all over and then from there you know they can kind of network with each other as well but having where they're just all together and um, self-sufficient within those communities and pr promoting overall health and wellness and a whole different way of life that's coming out of love. And, uh, and so we wound up talking and talking and talking, but it, when you said that about the education, it just reminded me of like, this has been something that I'm like slowly in the background, I guess, in meditations working on. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is what actually uh, you explained you very well. I was talking something that this concept only, and uh, detail is very important. And perhaps that uh, your interview meeting with that uh, politician, it is uh, he is very right. How to connect all these small small dots, and how to connect that um, community and organization, and funding is very important. And these and the core uh, principles which the what we want to offer. I mean, you want to offer is the same oils education and the food healthy lifestyle so what you learn there at yogananda kriyananda and that ashram so that's that's actually we need and we need a lot not only one or two we need everywhere so i really hope that sooner or later and maybe after covid or maybe during covid only something can be done even a day just a beginning humble beginning and later on we will find more such people who are really like who can understand and then they will also support you and we I, I know people are always around us but sometimes we have limitation limitation in the sense people are supporting us but maybe they we need some more bigger support for, from someone or something from our district or something from the city center something like that so as time goes by that will also come and so it's very good to listen to all your uh, stories, aspiration, and uh, and what we can do and what we are doing right now to create a more better world. Yeah. Thank you for all this, uh, your sharing and talks. Thank you for appreciating it. Um, well, I want to promote your products. I want to promote you. I mean, I follow you on Instagram. We've been in contact for at least a year now, probably longer. I mean, you've been with me as a follower and uh, guiding me since I opened up my Instagram. And now here I am as a YouTuber, starting just practicing <laughs> people and putting on little videos of things that come to me, whatever comes to me, meditation, to, uh, to go ahead and say, 
And uh, so I want to promote you. I want to promote your products. If someone from maybe India happens to be watching or someone else, I know you ship out internationally. So if you could just let people know, you know, where you're available, how to contact you, and then just make sure at the end of the interview to, to email me right away your um, contacts and, and anything you want in the description box for the interview. But go ahead and, and tell people, you know, how can they reach you? How can they buy your products? I mean, I have here, I'm ready to go, my, uh, <laughs> my Rose Hydrosol, and this is wonderful, and it's just like, I remember the first time, sorry, <laughs> I didn't like, give you a chance to answer the question, I just want to segue really quick. I remember the first time I got this, and it was, uh, I just returned back from Dubai, which was an accident, I was supposed to be in India, and I got this and I sprayed it and I even wrote in my journal, I keep journal entries, I was just like the, the vibration of this when I sprayed it, I was like, whoa, it was almost intoxicating. Like I was just, I, I've never done drugs or anything like that, but I just felt like higher than a kite. <laughs> it was just like, wow. And uh, so this is pretty powerful. So go ahead and tell people, how can they find these amazing, amazing products of yours? Let's see, uh, we are, um for for essential oils because the first thing is how original we are so for original i cannot talk to everyone so our photos speak so for that you can people can visit or you can visit our instagram the name is essential oil distiller and in that instagram you'll find that it's a community of 50 plus farmers and the name is nisarga farms so nisarga farms is not the id name maybe you can write it down on the YouTube, you can share uh, the link. Essential or Distiller, there they can see our work. And it is always better to read our post because many times people do not read the post and they're asking the same funny question. I tell them, please read the post and then come back to me. Yeah, so, and you have right there on the post, you have the little <laughs> symbols, no adulteration, no dilution. <laughs> yes, and, and there's content for, for every photo, there's some content, which I'm trying to put there. And not trying, but I, I put there. So. If they go through that, they will understand the, our work very easily, what the work we are doing. So essential or distiller on Instagram to see our the, the background story. And for the product, if you want finished product, then you can go visit Forest Treasure on again on Instagram. We have a website also for that. For essential oil distiller, we do not have a website because we are slowly working on it and uh, and because of COVID also, there's a delay and uh, you know, it's like, we get very busy also visiting farmers and again we have started traveling here in india so three options are there essential or discover instagram forest treasure instagram and forest treasure website the link itself is in the website so mm, the point here is to see to read the post and to go into detail and we are always very open to i mean i'm very open to questions because if i am not open to questions it means i'm hiding something it means I'm not very open and I'm not confident. It is not whether I know or not, but I have to be extremely open to all the questions, whatever someone asks. So um, I tell that, please ask questions very clearly because sometimes it happens that if I ask this question, maybe the person will feel bad. No, it's not like that because I'm, I'm in this field. You can say I'm more expert than fewer others. So it is not the matter whether I'll feel bad or not. If I don't know, I'll say thank you because now I can dig more into it. If I know, I'll guide them very clearly. So questions are very, very important. Uh, for example, just a simple, like yesterday only, someone was saying, sir, please sell, send me your price list. He said, okay. Then again, I said, give me your email ID. He said, no, you send me email. I said, okay. Then he, four or five times he said, give me your price list. And then he was saying, give me your old price list. I said, sir, you are not interested in oils. You are interested in prices. We don't deal like that. So similarly, it's okay to ask questions here, but at least uh, we, we, uh, we are not that kind of people. There are those who, if you want price list, then you can refer to on, online. There are thousands of companies. And the price list is open, visible. So our work is, it's a holistic work. In holistic work, the primary focus is on the holistic part. I mean, the, it is the primary focus on the holy holiness of that, that the whole action. And funding or management or the money flow economics becomes secondary part. 
so we don't want people to of course first what is the price and how much can i get no if you think this oil is interesting for you it is really very good then we will talk further and we i share so many i mean we are very open to gifts so so we keep giving so instagram is the better option better to check out all our post if not all at least few <laughs> few and similarly for posters you can see that you also have a YouTube channel. I know I've seen a few of your videos and, and you teach a lot about these oils and you know how to use them and also different things about their, their properties, how you could use them for medicinal purposes or this purpose or that purpose. Yes, and that is their uh, my source school of aromatherapy. Uh, we, Say it again, uh, please. Say it louder, please. My school of aromatherapy. Okay, I just want to make sure the okay. audience can hear that. So, uh, currently we are very uh, almost passive in that because of COVID. So, next year when the COVID really settles down, then we'll become more active. But still, there are, I think, approximately 20 videos over there. And if you go to them step by step, they are uh, pretty much informative. What is oil? How to make it? How, what, is, what is adulteration? How to find a good company also? So, we are not, I mean, we are not promoting our brand there. We, I even don't talk about our brand or something. They are simply like uh, something we know. And with this information, you, you go to your own local market. And in your own local market, you find something, whatever companies. And then if this information is very useful, please use it. So the aim is to enlighten people, uh, those who are new into essential oils. And this is also why one of the reasons is that because I am directly connected to farm, and very few people are, are like that who are connected to farm, who are into quality, who are into branding also, and who are into um, the whole uh, this. Um, I mean, the complete management in one word. <laughs> so uh, and uh, yeah, aromatherapy. So very few people are there because either the person is aromatherapist, or either the person is farmer, or the person is working in lab or in doing only quality work. So from A to Z, almost from A to Z, I'm taking care of. That's why I thought maybe I know more better in this field because it's my direct experience. So started that channel to inform people because sometimes people ask so many questions and it becomes very difficult to answer. Not because I do not want to because there's time limitation. So I say to them, please watch uh, all these videos in sequence or I just share them the link. Uh, like what are absolute? If you do not know, please go to that link. You see that video, you can see what are absolutes in aromatherapy and how to make certain recipe and brand. I have put a few videos for that also. So smart. That's what I've been doing on my YouTube. I have many different playlists and I always encourage people to check out the playlists, not just the videos, but actually go to the playlist because I categorize and I have how to make your own soap, how to make your own shampoo, how to make your own hand sanitizer. How yes. to so I have a whole series of that, or I have a whole series of like, um, uh, whatever garden, you know, here, here's my garden and how I started building my garden. Or here's a whole series on interviews I've done with holistic practitioners. And so I, like you, I can then refer people like, oh, you want more information about this? Okay. You know, here's the link. Or, yes. You know, please right. go to this playlist and just watch all the videos in the playlist so that you understand. And likewise on my website, I do that too, where. I have these lists and I just guide people to the list rather than me having to retype over and over and over again. It just gets redundant. <laughs> and we don't exactly. know. Exactly. Exactly. And it's very important. I mean, it's a very good thing that you have done because every time, everything we cannot explain it again and again. And we have more new stuff to do, more new creative work to do. So the old one, they can always refer there. And I, it is also very important because sometimes people just ask out of curiosity, they're not serious. So those who are serious, they will definitely watch. And those who are not, they will just ask questions. So we need a, it's like <laughs> creating our own space for people who are asking just for fun or out of seriousness or curiosity. So we need to see, make a difference here so that our work does not get disrupted, such comments or by such questions. So you did a very good thing by uploading those videos because uh, anytime anyone can refer to them and they are all free also. Thank you. So overall, for people to reach you, Instagram and YouTube and then your email would probably be best. Is that right? Yes, they can reach yeah, anywhere. 
perhaps Instagram is more better because photos are there so they can exit feel what we do and they can see it yes well that's wonderful thank you so much for coming on the channel i'm going to end the recording so did you, you. ask words otherwise i'll just go ahead and end the recording <laughs> thank you last word is <laughs> very difficult to say last word life is incomplete without meditation or any spiritual act that has to be a daily part of the life if you do that everything will be on the right track so this is my own i want to say at the end that's beautiful thank you i'm gonna go ahead and press the end thank you